Perplexity AI just released their new Spaces feature, and it's honestly pretty incredible. So in this video, I'll be walking through how you can get started with Spaces, along with my top five most useful ways to use Spaces. So when you pull up Perplexity, you'll now see the Spaces tab over here on the left. So we'll go ahead and click on that. And here you'll be able to look at all the spaces that you currently have. As you can see, I already have a lot and you'll be able to create your own new space. Both free and pro users will be able to access spaces. However, pro users will have added features like being able to upload more than five files and being able to toggle on and off of using the web versus your own documents. We'll get to that in a second and you'll see what I mean. The first use case that I wanna walk through here is having your own personal idea generator. As a YouTuber myself or wannabe YouTuber, I'm always looking for ideas for new videos and sometimes it can be hard to go out there and come up with new and fresh ideas. So I wanna create a space where I can work with AI to find brand new content ideas. So I'll title this Nick's personal YouTube idea assistant. And this is one of my favorite features of spaces. You can decipher on the exact AI model you wanna use for the entire space. I typically like to go with Claude because it's the best at writing. I think that it sounds most human, but if you were gonna do something with data, I'd probably use the ChatGPT 4.0 or GPT 4.0. For this one, I'll go ahead and go with Claude Sonnet. Now, this is the important part of giving it your instructions. So these instructions are for the entire space. I will go ahead and give it my own YouTube channel and some instructions on how they can help me with generating ideas. You are to become my expert YouTube strategist to help me find new ideas to make videos about. The main topics I cover are AI, marketing, and business. My YouTube channel is, insert URL. When I ask you a question, please search through my YouTube channel to reference it when coming up with new ideas. So I wanna make sure that it's going to my YouTube channel every time that I ask it a question about ideas. We'll say continue here, let it load, I'll refresh, and then I will jump into my new space. In spaces, you now have the opportunity to upload files. Now, since I'm actually accessing the web or my YouTube channel's URL for this, I won't need to upload files. However, we will be using files in the next use case, and that's one of the best features of spaces. You're able to upload your own files and have it search through those for its answers. So getting started here, you can see sources. If we had files uploaded, you could click on that. For this, we'll just go off the web. I wanna say, I'm looking for new video ideas I can make about AI based on my YouTube channel. Can you come up with some ideas? We'll let that run. As you can see, it's going off the instructions and searching through my YouTube channel. Based on the current AI trends in your YouTube channel focus, here are some video ideas. Video intelligence analysis, emerging AI trends, small language model, deep dive, healthcare AI. So these aren't too bad, honestly. Uh, I would probably play around and conversate with it and say, I kind of like this. Can you dig deeper on this? But these aren't actually that bad. And as you can see, you can look at its actual search process here. And it did search my YouTube channel and looked at all the AI video topics on my YouTube channel. And then it went and searched the web for different AI trends. And then it generated the list. Pretty cool. I didn't have to give it my YouTube channel. It went off the instructions that were in the space. The other thing that I like about spaces is that you can use it as a collaborative center with your team. So if I had other people on my team helping with YouTube videos, I could share this space so they could become collaborators and I could say, hey, let's all jump into this thread and basically prompt it to come up with new ideas so that we can come up with, you know, a bunch of ideas for the next month and, and next YouTube videos. Now let's jump into number two, which is gonna be a company resource center. This is essentially building your own AI agent and replacing a department in your company. So let's take, for example, let's say that I had a company and I wanted to have a human resources department, right? So if you're only like a company of five people, you probably don't have someone for HR. So you can create your own HR resource hub here. So in this example, went ahead and put Nick's company HR hub. This is a place for all HR questions. And the prompt is to become an expert on our company handbook, which I'm going to give it. When someone asks anything about that company handbook or anything about human resources at the company, it will go through that handbook, become an expert on it and give the answer. I'll go ahead and use the, let's go ahead and try GPT 4.0 for this one. 
And as you can see, I uploaded an employee handbook here. So I went online, I just found an example employee handbook that we'll use, and I uploaded it to the files here. So as a pro member, you can upload up to 50 files per space. I believe if you're on free, it's only up to five. I am a pro user, so I'm only gonna use one file here, but let's say you had a bunch of other HR docs, you could upload them all here so that it could reference all of those when you prompt it. When we come over to write the actual prompt here, one of the coolest features here is being able to choose between web or just spaces file. So because I want it to only reference things in our employee handbook, I'm going to deselect web so it's only looking through our spaces file. And for example, let's say I wanna understand how much paid time off I have. So I'll go ahead and ask, hey, how much paid time off do I have this year? So it's searching through the file. You can see it's reading the file and it's giving us the full breakdown of how much PTO we have. So from from hire to six months, no PTO, six months to a year, three days PTO. So it went through that document, pulled out the information, essentially like an HR worker would do or an employee would have to do by themselves. So it saved them a bunch of time. I think that's super cool. And I think it could be done with a lot of business documents. Feed it your business documents, your processes, your marketing materials, and prompt it and ask questions about it because it will become the expert on it. Now, moving on to use case number three, we have a personal teacher. So if I wanted to learn about a specific subject for this example, we'll use SEO. I can prompt it with that instructions and also give it the source documents that I wanna learn from. When setting up this space, I went ahead and named it Nick's new SEO teacher. And then the AI prompt that I gave it is, you are to become my expert teacher on everything about SEO marketing. But the only resource you should use is backlinko.com. Do not use any other website in your research. When I ask a question about SEO, please use a reference from backlinko.com in the response. If I had one source of trusted information that I wanted to learn from, let's say there's a marketing guru or a specific professor you wanna learn from, you could upload all of their source material and ask questions about it so they're basically your teacher. It's like being able to replicate someone's teachings and ask that person directly, except it's AI, which is cheaper and accessible. I will go ahead and change this model to GPT again and update this. Now I'll refresh. And when we come down to sources here, I'm gonna say web because I am asking it to access the web with that website. Let's ask a question here. So let's say I just started a brand new blog and I want to start ranking on Google. What are the first five steps I should take? So as you can see, it's looking at specific strategies all from Backlinko. When it comes in here, all of this is all referenced to Backlinko articles. So it did look at other sources, but all of the references are directly from Backlinko, which is awesome. Because if I trust Backlinko and all of their information, I can make sure that it's only looking at that website. And it's not just going out to Google and finding whatever information that is ranking best. I don't have to trust it. I can give it the exact information I want it to go off of. And now this brings us into use case number four, which is a personal researcher. So let's pretend we wanted to research into a specific topic. Maybe it's academic or scientific. And we basically want someone that's dedicated fully to just researching that topic. So in this example, I'm going to pretend like I am creating a new creatine product and I want to figure out everything I need to know about creatine and scientific studies and all the back research that would take hours and hours to go find and read through. I just want all of that information digested and I want to ask it questions. The title of this one is going to be Nick's Personal Researcher. You are to become my personal expert on creatine. Please research and read through as many academic papers about creatine as you can. When I ask you a question about creatine, please make sure you back it up with actual research. Now we'll go ahead and change this AI model default to, let's go ahead and try out Sonar Huge. So this is Perplexity's actual model that they've trained themselves. Let's go ahead and update this. And so I also found a creatine research paper here. And I'll go ahead and download this. I'll go ahead and add file, upload this. And now you can see we have that file uploaded into our space so we can recall it in all of our prompts. So now we can go to our sources here. We can select both spaces, file and web. And let's go ahead and ask it a question about creatine. Does creatine actually make you stronger? Creatine supplementation has been shown to have significant positive effects on strength and muscle performance. Now it gives us 
all of these references from our document, which is really cool. So we didn't have to go search through that entire research paper. It's giving us the little tidbits that we need to know. And it's actually referencing that research paper in these breakdowns. So that's cool. As you can see, there's a lot you could do with this. You could make this entire space all about creatine and invite your team members and basically have a collaborative space that you can keep all of your information about creatine or whatever topic that you want to research into. The last feature that I want to highlight about Perplexity Spaces is the ability to turn this into a page. Now, this has always been available, but I think it's cool to feature, especially on top of spaces, because when you're basically using spaces and creating threads in it, there may be stuff that you actually want to publish into a page and Perplexity makes that extremely easy. We'll go ahead and just go off of this prompt that we just asked it about creating and we can go ahead up to convert to page, click that button, and it automatically starts generating it into a blog post that looks like a real web page. Let this load here for a second. Awesome. So it's all done here. As you can see, we have our H1 title, we have our table of contents, we have all of our different sections here. And the cool part is that it's basically like your AI assistant blog writer. So strength gains from creatine, mechanisms of creatine action. You could put in another section about creatine here, just saying like, how long should some take creatine for? Boom. Now it's going to generate an entire other section for you just based off that prompt, right? You didn't have to write this out. Now it has a whole other section in there just based off that prompt. And you can also add media here. If you wanted to upload an image for the header of your blog, you could do that. Or of course you can use AI you can go to custom prompt here and the style let's use life like photograph and then the subject is a bottle of creatine and a big muscle. Let's see what it gives us there. Not bad, honestly. That's not a bad picture. I uh, could definitely use that. So that doesn't look that bad. Obviously the label's off. It didn't get that totally right. But now we have a blog with a title image and we can also jump in here and we could add media, right? So like strength gains from creatine. It went ahead and picked up some media from another website. It's really cool what you can do with this. And then you can also click publish here. And this is going to just publish it to a web page. This obviously isn't a website that you own. This is on a perplexity URL, but it is possible for these to rank in Google. That's it for today. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you got any value of it, I'd appreciate if you hit the like button, subscribe, drop a comment, and as always, peace.